All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Christian's Colloquy. I'm Christian. I'm so glad you could join us for this interview. As you could see here, I'm not alone. I'm joined by my friend, Aris. Hello, Aris. How are you? Hey, pretty good. How about yourself? I'm fantastic. I'm excited to have you on. And as people can see, looking at the, the title of the YouTube video or the podcast, wherever you're getting this today, we have a interesting topic, fatherhood. And Aris is especially qualified, much more qualified than I am, <laughs> being a father himself. So we'll have a few questions, get into uh, fatherhood, perhaps from a Christian perspective or just a perspective of experience as a father and a Christian. But before we dive in, Aris, why don't you just inter- introduce yourself briefly, let the people know who you are. Hello. Uh, well, my name is Reese Hampton. Uh, I am a father of three. Uh, my wife and I have been married since uh, 2012. Uh, we had we had Lincoln in 2014, uh, Ruby 2016, and then Teddy in uh, 2018. Uh, we attend Scottsdale Bible in uh, Scottsdale Bible Church in Arizona, and uh, we uh, we met not too long. I don't know, maybe two three years ago. Yeah. And uh, so then uh, we, we got introduced and became friends and here we are. Yeah, no, that, that's fantastic. So th- thank you for that introduction. And yeah, so we have quite the, the interesting history with some other guys that we, we know online. But uh, no, it's been great to get to know you, Reese. I'm glad you can join us. I know you have a lot of great things to say. We've had a lot of fantastic and not only on the theology, but also just stuff about life. Talking. Life, yeah. yeah, so that. That's good. And I'm glad that I can share you with my, my audience. So your father, you got your kids, you have your family and that's always, it inspires me. I love hearing what you got going on with the family and the stories and getting to know a bit just through our conversations. But I I have some introductory questions just to get the ball rolling here. Keep it simple. Keep it uh, to the point. So just very quickly, what is your favorite part about being a father? Oh, um, I, I, honestly, I just, I think my favorite part about being a dad would just be like, uh, the little things or like, you know, things like, uh, you know, especially with my daughter, she, she loves giving hugs. So, it, you know, just those small interactions that we get to have, uh, have together, um, the, the times that, you know, me and my son are out, you know, playing catch or playing basketball or just, you know, hanging out on the couch together. Um, those are the memories that I think are going to, stick with me because those are I feel like those are the memories I have with my dad um Mm -hmm. are just uh those uh like we used to have like the this little uh tv mounted um in our kitchen it wasn't even mounted like because they were you know big back then and he would just sit there and watch it and I would just sit up under him and look on you know just I don't know being four or five and I don't even remember what he was watching but we're just together so I just I like hope I'm having those memories with my kids Right. So that's, um, you know, some of my, my favorite things. Oh, that's amazing. And I love hearing that. So that is fantastic. It's definitely heartwarming. And I could yeah. see how, <laughs> how those would be memories that you would hold on to. So thank you for that. And now to give a bit more of a, a, diff, a difficult question, we could call it, what would you say is the most challenging aspect of being a father? Um. <laughs> um, the most challenging, I think, uh, expectations uh, mm. is is part is one of them. I I, won't, I don't know if it's the most challenging, but um, expecting your kids to be a certain way and them not being like that. What um, like I'm I'm I was really into sports growing up, and my oldest isn't that into sports. He he played soccer because his sister played, and she was you know pretty good, and. Um, changing my mindset of like, he might not do sports or, um, uh, things like that. Uh, other, um, uh, another thing that is, is when you're, when you're disappointed in your children and not mad at them, at the, that, that old ad is just so true is like when they do something and, and you know, they knew different, whether it's, you know, uh, interactions with their siblings, something at school that happened and, uh, you, you, you just sit there and like, man, I, 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 you know, they need to make better decisions. Those are, those are really, really hard to, to watch them go through. But um, I do think part of that is just growing up for them and just, you know, there's a learn, you got to learn life a little bit. Right. Right. No. And 
even <laughs> even hearing that where those are the most challenging i imagine those are valuable life lessons that you get to watch your children go through and help them through and i can see why i guess that adage makes sense the whole disappointed not angry but uh yeah no that and, that's yeah and i feel like sometimes you know that's that's how it works with with our heavenly father <laughs> a lot of times yeah I, I do i know i do things you know in my life all the time where you know he he's disappointed in the things that i do <laughs> so right you know my my kids you know act like i do yeah which <laughs> it sometimes works out well sometimes not so well but not so well yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah no that that's great thank you for sharing that and Part of the reason why I'm so excited to have you on to talk about fatherhood, I know a significant portion of my audience will be young men in my shoes who aren't fathers yet, but would one day like to be a father and would like to think about that and hearing little things like that. Those are things we can not only look forward to, but also think about and maybe prepare for or just brace ourselves for. So that that's helpful to hear. And it's from this point, now that we're warmed up a bit, we're having a good time already, okay. we'll, we'll transition to some of those those bigger questions or those more theological kind of questions where you already mentioned uh, our heavenly father. So I imagine this will come up a bit, but what would you say as you approach being a dad and uh, embracing fatherhood, what would you say are your core convictions, which shape the way you approach this, this vocation? Um, I, I mean, I think the, the biggest, I don't know, maybe the most obvious <laughs> is, would be, you know, Proverbs 22, 6, you know, train up your child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And that's like, um, that's kind of always in my brain is, you know, trying to keep Christ centered uh, mm -hmm. in, in my kids' lives. You know, we, we try to talk about, you know, talk about the Bible often, talk about, um, you know, how, how God sees, you know, uh, life situations, how he sees uh, interactions with, you know, siblings with with everything, um, we we try to we try to tie it in somehow. Uh, that's definitely you know a, a big part. Yeah, no, that that's good, and that's helpful to hear. Where you, you embrace your role as someone who not only shows the way, but there's active teaching and sort of demonstrating to your children this is how you would approach life as a christian as someone committed to the word and seeking to live that out so it's interesting how that that weaves together where you're being i guess encouraged by the word to speak a certain way and to act a certain way and to teach a certain thing and so much of that is then pointing your children to the word and what it teaches us and what it explains to us so i think that's powerful would you say that that is something you find easy to do or is that a challenge to to really train up your children or does it yes. feel natural oh it's a challenge okay. <laughs> no it's both okay <laughs> i mean because there, there's always things like um just you know like the, the the things that is very common you know that all christian households you know do is like when when the food is ready and you're ready to eat we know it's time to pray mm -hmm. so you know just like you know things like that but then it, it gets into like you know when uh you know when my when my dad like he, he just had um hip surgery a couple of days ago and you know when when he is you know we're talking about this with with my kids it's like you know well i i want them to be like well we should we should pray for him you know and just to have constantly you know try to rely rely on the lord right uh, you know, always, always, always keep that, keep that forward. Yeah, that, that's good. And I imagine they, as they grow in that, and as you seek to teach that, I imagine it's not only your direct teaching, but that's also something where you would have to live that out in front of them. So it's as much learning by example as it is, hey, let's actually talk about why this is mm -hmm. a good thing to do. Is that something you're consciously aware of as you're living your life in front of your kids hey let me be a good example or is that something that you just sort of do uh that that is something that you you have to think about and a lot of times you you have to um when i know i'm messing up because i'll be doing something you know that i shouldn't be doing mm -hmm. and it's like you know there's a tier of things that are bad it's like this is you know bad in the lord's eyes this is bad in uh my marriage like i shouldn't be you know uh, I should be treating, you know, my family better, but then it goes down to the kids see this. And, um, from these, all these different levels, you don't want to mess up any of them. So, uh, seeing, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I make a lot of mistakes. So I just want 
um, good example for my kids and, you know, to keep it, um, to, to always keep it forward. And sometimes I, it, as you know, sad as it sounds like you just get caught up in life, which is not an excuse. It's an explanation. And, um, and just to keep turn, like we, we never want to have, um, like there, there's never a Sunday where we're like, we're tired today. We're not going to go to church, you know, like that, you know, that shouldn't, shouldn't be a thing. Um, so just th- so that the kids know that, that we know that, um, and, uh, to always keep that in mind. Hmm. Yeah, that that's good. And maybe this, this isn't a question we talked about, but it just popped into my head. You have, uh, two sons and a daughter, right? That's what, correct. Yeah. yeah. So would you say that's, that's different as you relate to your sons compared to your daughter, or is it the same dynamic going on or what, what sort of uh, differences might there be as you approach being an example? Uh, I, well, this, my wife helps out a lot with this because mm-hmm. I, I mean, parenting is huge with the team. Like being a father is, um, I, is really hard being, um, but having a life partner, having my wife with me to go along this is, um, you know, amazingly good. Right. <laughs> and um, I, I really think that my wife helps with all the, the feminine and all the, the, the loving, enriching stuff for my daughter. And I like to, to you know, think that it's I'd like to be the masculine um, a representative for my sons. Right. And I think that um, that is something that we try to try to you know, we, we do treat our boys and girls differently, um, right. you know, at, at, um, in our house, um, we, uh, you know, we, we love them the same. <laughs> uh, I do say my daughter's my favorite sometimes when the boys aren't around. <laughs> <laughs> I the girl them. holds a special, special place in my heart. Mm. Uh, um, but, uh, it's just, you know, it, having, having a, having my wife is, you know, very, very big. Mm. In, in, in this walk together and us being on the same page right. um definitely yeah. no that that makes a lot of sense and i think that's something we we need to remember where you're seeking to raise sons and you're seeking to raise a daughter and that that's a team effort because there are lots of needs and different needs and it, it comes together as a family but uh a lot of things to work through and i'm glad that you're able to approach it as a unit i i imagine that that's very important also being able to encourage each other and rely on each other as you go through it together so that's yes, definitely yeah no that that's very helpful and maybe it's from that point we could talk about uh bridging some of your interests and thinking a bit about uh you mentioned uh scripture is important and you went right to proverbs when you're talking about how to raise your children but uh I know from our discussion online, we're not, uh, we, we get into some theological stuff. We're not super big on there all the time debating theology. Well, maybe yeah. we are sometimes depending sometimes. on our mood. But uh, <laughs> So theology is an interest. Scripture is an interest. Would you say that your interest in casually talking about theology and sometimes getting at least in proximity to some of those big uh, theological discussions, would you say that those kind of conversations or that kind of study ever interacts with your identity as a father or sort of helps you be a better father or maybe a worse one. I don't know, but uh, yeah, is there, are um, there any bridges between those worlds? Definitely. Um, I think, I think one, um, you know, em- embracing the doctrines of grace for me was, I think kind of big uh, mm. just um, to know that like, I'm, I'm supposed to do all I can and all I should my wife and I and raising our kids to grow up in, you know, a Christian home you know, staying in the word, you know, going to church and all these things, but knowing that salvation is not in my hands, it's in the Lord's is like so freeing to me. And, you know, it's also a little scary, (laughs) right? but, but, but ultimately I know that, you know, the Lord is, uh, the Lord is in control and knowing that and, um, and, you know, putting my, my, my faith in that is, I think, very, uh, it gives a burden off my shoulders that I don't want to (laughs) bear. Right. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. And especially given how protective you would be of your children, that, that would be something where if you maybe had a different theological perspective, it would be a different kind of stress or a different kind of approach. But I I think you're right in sharing that perspective as you're seeking to evangelize and disciple your children, having a theological framework like that based on scripture, I'm sure freeing is exactly the kind of word you're free to do the best job you can without having to worry about things outside of your control. So yeah, uh, 
Yeah. I'm not saying I don't worry, <laughs> <Yeah>. but <laughs> some, right. some, some days, but definitely, but I mean, ultimately I just, you know, it, down in my car, I know that, you know, the, the good thing is going to happen, you know, wherever, whatever, whatever is uh, pleasing to the Lord. So um, I like to rest in that. Oh, that's fantastic. Resting in his good control. So we, we got the doctrines of grace, any other, so you mentioned, you were in your fatherhood, you're looking up to God as heavenly father. Would you say that understanding, understanding who God is, has shaped how you approach fatherhood? Yes. in um, in, in many ways, um, understanding that for looking at, you know, looking at the heavenly father and all the character characteristics that is described in the Bible and knowing how I should reflect that on my kids and trying to emulate that which, you know, I fail at, but, uh, but having the perfect example is something that, um, man, it's because I, I mean, I had my, I, you know, I, I love my dad. I, he, he did, you know, I have three other siblings. Um, I, I had a great childhood. And so knowing that I had this great dad, but he, but he had flaws, mm -hmm. he made mistakes and to look past that and to know that even he did, you know, we, we, there's someone up, you know, the, there is, you know, the father above us all who, who, who you can just put your, your rest in. And then you just want to sh be the best you can be to your kids and having the, the greatest example um, is very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sure. And that's encouraging where we do have the greatest example. And it's not something we need to go seeking for in, uh, secret places or something. We have the word right there. It tells us <laughs> yeah, exactly amen. who he is and how we can uh, follow his example. So that that's really helpful and something I hope uh, other people, and that that applies to so many other situations and contexts as well, where God truly is the, he's so much. And one of those things is the perfect example and how to, to live our lives. And we, we emulate him. So that, that is good to hear. people would think about this or imagine that that's where I think for different people different things would come to mind where I think the doctrines of grace for a lot of people that would be an interesting one they wouldn't think of but uh, things like God being our, our heavenly father that might come up but I, I couldn't even so I, I would imagine yeah some things that would come up so maybe sanctification just leaning that dog oh, and watching your <laughs> kids grow and seeing yourself grow. So that, that might be something that yeah. helps contextualize some of those challenges. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so there are probably things like that. And that would be a point where maybe we can encourage my listeners as you're thinking about this, that's something where people can bring in their own study and theological reflection. But I think the point is clear. Theology does matter. And it matters so much that in a task like being a father, where people would think, why would theology matter? It's actually the bedrock. It's actually freeing in some uh, senses it's guiding in other senses and it's a place where you described it as finding rest so i hope that's something people pick up on and embrace and take to their own study yeah so maybe from there just uh why don't we oh yeah that so i i have my questions here and i i like this next one so we already got into a little bit you're working alongside your wife and you two are a unit and a team you talked about that maybe you want to talk some more about that but also other people, other institutions or places that you would seek to work alongside as raising your children? Um, definitely. Yeah. Like family, mm -hmm. um, you know, outside, um, outside my, you know, my immediate family. Um, my, um, my wife has a, a, a sister out here. So like, you know, so we have close family that's, that's nearby um, in law. Uh, her, her mom is, is close by. All my my family's still at, all in Minnesota. Um, I have some cousins out here, but um, but we we talk frequently, and I think family is very important. And to have them around is um, you know they're they're all good influences. Um, and our you know we love our church. Um, we've been uh, attending there for uh, six six years now. Um, yeah, six years and. Um, we just, um, you know, couldn't, couldn't say enough good things about it. Um, I think it's very important that um, parents, um, you know, well, anyone, but, <laughs> but for this context, the parents find a good, a good, you know, local church to attend. They have, there's so many, just, just to grow with other Christian, you know, families. 
um, to have other Christian friends with kids, um, you know, to, you know, to play and interact and, you know, to, to have Christian children grow up together is, um, you know, very important and, uh, it's, you know, very helpful. Um, but, you know, and then doing, doing other things involved in that with like, um, you know, like, you know, we talked, I talked a lot earlier, you brought up sports. Yeah. Um, I think, I think there's a lot to learn, um, with playing sports, you know, just whether, you know, being humble or, or, uh, just, just, you know, really trying hard and, um, just the team aspect. And there's always, you know, you always can try to point, you know, try to turn that and, and, and point back to the Lord somehow, mm-hmm. um, with, you know, but my, my wife, um, she does, she does a pretty amazing job with, um, you know, doing different projects with the kids. Um, we have this thing called a morning basket where, um, you know, we wake up, you know, in the mornings we, you know, go through, you know, with those catechisms we go through. Um, actually, yeah. There's theology. Mm. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful book that, that uh, my wife will go through with the kids. It, it has like, um, You know, it'll just have, you know, like it'll, t- it'll have a topic like baptism and then it'll break it down. It'll talk about it, you know, scripture, you know, how we understand it, where it comes from. So just, uh, you know, having routines like that is just, um, mm. it's always grounding. Yeah, good. So I'll, I'll try to get a link for uh, theology in the description down below if people want to check that out. That sounds like a great resource, but uh, maybe picking up on a couple of things you said. So you mentioned family is important and then church, you have this community around you. So I would get the impression not being uh, a father myself, but having a father and knowing other fathers that <laughs> there, there's both uh, maybe we could divide it and maybe this isn't a helpful division, but there's there's practical help that people get give, but also like the emotional and spiritual support. So I imagine it's great to have like other people alongside where if you ever want to take a break or if you ever need some help, someone's there to to provide some backup and stuff like that. But then I imagine just being a, a parent and going through life, you want people that you could get advice from and encouragement from. W- would you say that there are, those are both things you're looking for from family and from church, or is it one and the other, or like what, what source do you, you turn to when you have a particular need, we could say. Um, when, like, if I, if I'm like, if I'm trying to get poured into, like if I, if I need some advice or, or I, I would, I would go to um, my family first. Mm. Um, and then, but I feel like they have like a biased opinion because, <laughs> you know, uh, I, don't, I don't know if that was the right word, but like they, they have a different opinion and mm-hmm. they, they pr- probably know me, you know, the best. So um, I, I would go with them first and, and then I would, you know, branch out to, you know, other you know cousins, um, reach out to them. Cause I have, um, they have a lot of wisdom, mm-hmm. but having the church family there um, like my, you know, knowing I can call my pastor and he'll, um, you know, he'll, he'll come meet with me. He'll talk with me. He'll pour into me. Um, that's, that's really big. Uh, mm-hmm. we, uh, I, I was at, I had this group that I was with in church and, um, in this program, there was, uh, about, you know, there's, there's guys who, who we all grew together and, after, you know, we had this small group, now we were pretty close. We, we still communicate. We're still in small groups. We still meet together and, uh, having other dads, um, going, uh, you know, through the pandemic and going through, through everything together and, um, always, you know, to have these common interests together, sharing and, you know, uh, so having wife problems with someone who is not a Christian, I think is different than having wife problems with someone who is Christian. Right. Um, so to get those experiences and bounce them back and forth with each other um, and is, um, I think you really need that. <laughs> you really need that in your life. Yeah. No, that that's helpful. And that leads to another follow-up question. Uh, you mentioned growth a lot, which I think is so critical. And you, of course, know your life from being 
before a dad and now to being after, are there, I assume there are ways you have seen yourself grown uh, or grow after and during becoming a father. What, what are some things perhaps you've learned about yourself after having children or perhaps places where you, uh, you realize, hey, I'm actually, I thought I was like this, but I'm actually like this after uh, having, having some kids. Is, is that something you're aware of that you've seen in your life? So I was, um, I, I, would, I would say I'm a patient person. Mm. So, um, and I feel like having kids that like stretch that to the core. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> there, there is, um, there is just, I mean, there's only so many times in a day where your your child can ask for a snack before you, you know you try not to explode. <laughs> yeah, it's it's um, so just having just patience is mm. is unbelievably you know uh, is something that I I thought I had down, but then you know they they, they will test the boundaries of that, um, and then um, some some other things that I, I think have changed me would would be um, how. I've, I've always been a family person. Like my, my, my wife came from a good family. I came from a good family and just having, having that idea or that example was something that I, you know, wanted to keep in mind and, and thinking it would just come easy <laughs> was, you know, or just like, Oh, that's how I, I, I had it like that. You know, my, you know, my wife had it like that. So I'm going to, but you have, you have to work. Right. You have to uh, you have to work at your marriage. You have to work at uh, raising your children. Um, it 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 is not uh, it just it doesn't come easy. Mm, right. That and that, and that. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was, and um, I just I think you know I I view myself as you know the head of the household. So that mm. um, that puts a burden on you. Um, that um, that you you don't realize this um how you don't realize the stakes maybe is the word or or how how much pressure that could be or is um until you're you're in that position right and and that that i'm sure yeah raises the stakes but then it's nice where i think we see some connections here we're having those doctrines we mentioned before it it provides perhaps some comfort in those situations but it also i think that appreciates that uh fatherhood is a high calling it's a serious calling and it's something to be aware of when you're, when you're getting into that arrangement. And of course, we could talk about uh, people who uh, surprisingly or uh, made a decision, became a father without um, really understanding that. And that is often, it ends with such unfortunate stories, but it's great to hear where you understand that, you appreciate that, you see the growth. And being a father requires a lot of patience. It requires a lot of diligence. It requires uh, a lot of support, as you described it. And it's fantastic to hear. I, I think for someone like myself and other people in our shoes, I'd rather be thinking about these things and understanding these things before Definitely. being in that position where it's around the corner all of a sudden. So, mm-hmm. uh, Aris, that's that's so helpful. And I'm looking at the time. I promised I wouldn't keep you too, too long. But I think on that note, this is where we can get to that that ever important question for someone like me and so many others like me, where we want to hear from you, what advice may, so people would often phrase this as like, what advice would you give yourself like five, 10 years ago or something, but maybe we could just shoot straight for someone like me who wants to be a father one day and hopefully one day relatively soon in the grand scheme of things, what advice would you give me preparing for that vocation or seeking to one day be in that? Um, so uh, I forgot who I heard say this, but I, um, they said like, if, you know, when you're, when you're single and you're living life, like your happiness of can be, get to a 10 and your lowest low can get to a negative 10. And then you get married and your happiness can get to a 20 and your, your lowest can get to a negative 20. But when you have kids, that happiness level is, you, you can't measure it. But also, you're at the lowness level. You can't measure it. Uh, <laughs> so, and and that that makes total like you, the 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 you know the, the joys that you have in life with you know will be with your your family and you know with be, enjoy with your wife and kids. And that is you know you, there, there's times when like we'll be on uh, we'll just be sitting you know together like we just gotta. Um, like this, this fire pit and just sitting out with the family, listening 
to, to music by this fire pit, you're just, you know, you're just like, thank you, Lord, for giving me this blessing. But then when you have a sick child or uh, you're in the hospital with them and you're, just, you're at this lowest low that you can't imagine and just um, crying out to the Lord to like, you know, to heal them, to, to, to be with them, or, you know, they, something happens, you have to be ready for these huge rains of emotion. So there's, it's going to be really great. It's going to be really sad at some points. And you, you have to prepare yourself for, for both of those um, to give praises at all points in between <laughs> and, uh, and to, to watch out, watch out for both of them. Mm-hmm. And then um, the other, the, uh, another thing I would ex- explain were our expectations. Um, thinking that uh it's going to be a certain way um Mm -hmm. like when i remember like the holding the baby for the first you know holding lincoln our our oldest for the first time i was like yeah this is pretty cool i didn't have that instant like oh like uh, you know like i was just i was so scared Mm -hmm. when they told us like okay you know it's time it's time to leave now like i was holding this like you guys like who's coming home with us like what am i supposed to do like I, i have no clue like I'm, I, I don't know how to be a dad. Like I don't know what to, I don't know what's going on. Um, it, it was, you, it was so scary. And uh, but you know, just relying on relying on the Lord. You know, relying on my wife mm-hmm. um, was was big. So I, those are some some big takeaways I would go with. Yeah. No. And and again, that that's so helpful. Where it's easy to have a lot of grand visions of what it will be like when we just imagine it but I think that's a reality check where it it is a responsibility and you do have to rely on other people and yeah and I like that uh all the way to the top all the way to the bottom that that is a powerful reminder and that's probably something that I wouldn't fully appreciate or understand until I'm in that position and experiencing those feelings for uh, a child of mine where I can, I can imagine the highs, but those lows I can imagine as well would be quite difficult. And that's something you work through and move through. And I'm sure it's great to have so many others, including God, of course, to rely upon. So yeah, Aris, that, that is so helpful. I thank you for sharing that. I'm sure many people will be blessed by that. And I want to do what I typically do uh, on the show. You gave some advice there, which is so helpful, but is there any closing word or anything like that, or any encouragement related to any topic you would offer my audience as we wrap this up here? Um, you know, I just, just an, as encouragement to anyone who, um, who doesn't have any kids, you know, I hope that, you know, you, you find that wife, that husband, and, you know, you're able to have that blessing and, you know, pray, pray for it, pray for it, you know, and just, uh, hope, Hope that uh, the, the Lord answers your prayers, might have other the plans, but don't have any expectations when uh, either way. <laughs> oh, that That's good advice. And that's the great thing about who our God is. We know that he has what's best for his people in store. So that that is fantastic, Aris. Thank you for joining us here. That was fantastic. I think I'll have to have you back on again, maybe talk about some of the other aspects. Like I imagine we could talk a lot about marriage with you. So Maybe yeah. that, that'll be something we talk about in the future. Maybe you and I will talk about that offline. But uh, anyway, right. yeah, thank, thank you so much. And thank you. To, right, thanks for having me. Yeah. Th- thanks for, again, sharing. And let me know, actually, if you have any other resources you would like me to share in the description. Uh, that, yeah, that you'll find I got a helpful. couple. Yeah, that, that's yeah. good. So those will be down below, people. And if you have any questions for Reese, I don't I can't answer the questions on fatherhood. I could give you some, <laughs> some ideas, but people... Uh, leave a question. I'll make sure we talk about it and then uh, get you a reply. But uh, anyway, I think that's it. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. And I hope that you will join us again next time on Christmas Colloquy. Take care.